Hello and welcome back to Conarium. Let's proceed with our Ivy repellent. Although we don't really know where we are proceeding. Okay, it's a wide box or something. Maybe it's a door. Oh, you're made of stone. That's reassuring. An ancient musical instrument with elaborate ornaments that are reptilian in nature. It still looks playable. Dr. Faust! Dr. Faust, are you there? Answer me, please! Only one message to you, Dr. Faust. You don't say. Really? dagger, wholly intact and still amaz amazingly sharp. Even after all these years of desolation, the elaborate carvings on the curious metallic surface signifying a reptilian nature. It looks like they couldn't bear the bells and the singing. Hmm. There's a mixture of multiple civilizations. At this point, I'm for oh. sure you have a great more.
Hmm? What does that? I believe no more can we harbor ourselves on the safest shores for there are things that cannot be undone. It did nothing. Frank, <gasps> Joe's funny. Is that a sheer delusion? <laughs> Having heightened my knowledge of the arcane arts, I find myself contemplating the subject of universals, whether definitions exist in the nature of things or in mere conceptions, illusory and perhaps a sheer product of human language. Our means of receiving impressions are absurdly few and our notions of surrounding objects infinitely narrow. We see things only as we are constructed to see them, and can gain no idea of their absolute nature. So what lies beyond the woven limits of the flesh we've been trapped in, and is it really possible to pass beyond it at least once? What do we know of the world and the universe around us? For the last ten years of my rough life, I have lived with the undulating echoes of the scorching questions that have rendered me a ghost amongst the fox. But yesternight I finally got some answers. During the last session, Frank and I managed to get the printer to work, and, even though the results are blurry, we have the first empirical proof of what we saw out there. anyone else see this grand collection. It could be extremely dangerous for both of us. Deliberately preserved heads from Mesopotamian marshlands. Such cultivated minds kept in permanence by getting dried under the scorching sun with methods now lost to us. As we As well as the sun, they were believed to be symbols of knowledge. A stuffed sub-adult Nile crocodile, one of the oldest creatures still living on the face of the earth. A medicine man mask from Northwest Africa. Hmm. Okay. Now those two remind me of scratches. A sacrifice ritual mask from Middle Africa. And so, uh, as I understand, you were worried about the heads. Or anything else? Cobalt? Well. Of course, this leads to basement. Hmm. Looks like a preparation for a long trip. Yours? 
This relic is from Madagascar. I have two versions, but this one is extremely rare. It is called Ur Hanaldi. Nobody knows exactly what it means, but from its symbolic depiction of a dark sphere inside a light one, it is thought that it could mean the underworld. I had it. Ah, really? I had it brought by an old captain friend who often visits that island for trading purposes. This is exactly the same room I've been in, in one of my visions. No. Old friend, what you've told me about the shared nature of the experience the Clarion provides made me think about necromantic means of data inquiry. I am sure you'll remember what I told you about the any certain corpses never decay, but rest firm and fat in their tombs for a thousand years. I believe with some help from the certain acquaintance, I can provide you with such specimens. This would be beneficial for both of us, I believe. Eagerly awaiting answer, H. Warren. So the whole... This whole expedition is just a bunch of specimens. Nothing more. And a penguin. Imperial penguin? Uh, Emperor penguin. A native drum from the Azmat people of New Guinea. Their creation myth says Fumeripits made the first carvings of men and women. By beating on this drum, Fumeripits caused the figures to dance, bringing them to life. Now that's very interesting. According to legend, this very djembe belonged to a learned drummer from Senegal, who can speak with the dead by rhythmically beating it. Mask of an all-powerful moon goddess, esteemed by an eastern island tribe, now lost in time. It is from the private collection of the late, famous hermit, Klaas von Herdeth. Don't ask me how I get it. I have my ways. At least it's not bloody on the inside. Elusive mask from the submerged parts of Kogulan Islands. Cryptic mask with an untraced origin. Mm. It's unbelievable how some games go far with their research to deliver things like this. Skulls from New Guinea that are believed to be housing protective spirits. The other thing, if any of that is true. This is called the Mask of the Beholder. I need a phonograph cylinder. Mm -hmm. The second is not. How can we comprehend exactly how much time has passed since the erection of the early cigarettes of Samaria? What can we know about the time worn Sphinx? still standing on the Giza Plateau. The only, they only justify the sheer ignorance of mankind by forcefully making us admit our instantaneous vibrations in the vast cosmos are but an illusion. Today I want to inform you about something that is equally as interesting as such edi edifices. That's something I presume you will have a hard time believing. I have finally acquired some information regarding the fabled cities of Rubal, K 
Kali, which are said to have been built in an undreamt age of certain wonders and rumored to have been intentionally submerged beneath the eternally shifting sands thousands of years ago. There is even more to the story. According to a reliable source, there should be depictions of inf or information about the locations of ancient Conarium spirit within those halls. Within a few weeks, you will receive a book containing the locations of those cities and a map predicting, predating all maps known today. Directly copied from the antediluvian anti originals. I am sure you are excited beyond imagination and eager to discuss these findings in detail, but that will have to wait a while since I'll be away for some time visiting the oriental wonders of the old world. I am sure you know what I mean. Hope to see you soon. Holly Warren Woodland Lizard Spirit Mask A serpentine ritual mask from India which is said to have hypnotic effects on the one who deeply gazes into its eyes. We are dangerously getting closer to reptilians. Hmm. It sounded like the floor is hollow back there. Yeah, I noticed that. Cylinder. And a disc. One little metal object. Yes, it's good that I walk around. <laughs> As told in some banned ancient volumes, I was able to acquire it is evident that Conarium, when properly adapted to work with the human psyche and physiology, can transcend the mind beyond the limits of time and space into a peculiar place we are yet to explore. If not for our own experiences corresponding exactly with the depictions provided in Necronomicon and some other books of forgotten lore, I would easily declare myself a madman. Conclusively, I have solid evidence printed out for me to justify the objectivity of my position. That dimension is completely devoid of light other than some small glowing and morphing geometrical shapes appearing and disappearing momentarily around us. It also feels extremely cold, but I do believe these are just null sensations that our physical bodies attain from what is otherwise impossible to acquire without the conarium. It is not for us to see this fantastic void with a pair of corporeal eyes, and possibly we are the first explorers ever to reach this ancient forbidden place. But the question now, weighing heavily on my mind, is whether we could ever fully understand this experience with the hindrance of our own limited sensations. When using Conarium, we are able to be seen as well as to see. For some time, I was detecting a conscious something, previously unseen by my rudimentary vestiges. Only lately, it becomes clear to me. Now it comes into every session and seems to materialize more and more each time. I won't, I won't attempt describing it, but only would say that it's not benevolent. From what I can get from its glowing semblance, which I believe is used as a way of communication, it can sense you only if you spend a considerable time within the sessions. I've read about it in the cursed Necronomicon and some elusive records compiled from deep-rooted Bedouin oral literature. Thus learned, that it tries reaching the corporeal vessel to dominate and execute the wanderers of the beyond, such as ourselves. But again, against all warnings, I was a fool to believe that I can stop it with just simple signs and incantations. As a resort, we 
we ended up lighting up the place with myriads of candles as well as electrical lamps. But still shiver with fear with every noise our rundown enclave is causing. Isolated from ancient darkness of the night. Yes, I can definitely believe you that it's not benevolent. So, don't go into the dark. What? Hmm. Hmm? I can't move. The game seems to be stuck. Friend, judging from the tone of your last correspondence, I see that you were shocked to hear how far I've been able to progress. You asked me how I did it, and here I tell you every detail. I believe you remember my mentioning to you a young gentleman named Frank Gilman from Miskatonic University. When I saw his thesis on the pineal gland, its developmental and structural evolution, and decadence over the course of thousands of years. I knew I was one step closer to freeing myself from the chains of our corporal limits. Holly, that boy was able to understand and the underlying notions and spot the details I was unsure of. I contacted the only per and only partially told him about my research so that he may not treat me as others did. As a man of science, I was sure that he would get anxious and so he did. After days and nights of meticulous work, changing the design of the machine I originally built and fine-tuning it to adapt to our physiology, we managed to make the device work without rejection by the brain. It was not a design for humans, but yet we managed to prepare it for us. You remember how those so-called scientific communities mocked me when I first told them about my theory of transcending the human senses using a mechanical device? To help of them, they mocked me with the assertion that it cannot be tested by current methods of scientific inquiry. And here it is, giving enough empirical data related to the sessions. It is an alien sensation using it seeing and feeling without the help of one's corporeal body while floating easily in the ocean of darkness. I will write to you again in the coming weeks and invite you to personally see the results. Can regards, Ross. And with this, I think we'll end this part here. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!